Hi everyone, this is Nya and today I'm going to be showing you a loose painting of a marshland scenery. So let's begin by prepping the paper. So firstly, I'm just going to mask off this paper around the sides. I try to make it as even as possible and this is to create a white frame after I finish the painting. I don't usually use two jars of water but because I want the paint to be fairly clean and I want the vibrancy of each color I'm going to be using two so one will be to just rinse off my brush and the other one will be for wetting my paper and for loading paint. And before I do anything I'm going to just sketch out the marshland so it's a bit easier for me to paint later on. So here I just drew out the horizon line and also a rough composition of the grassland and also a few trees for the background. So now I'm going to get out my masking fluid. I have the pen version but you can use any masking fluid you have. I'm just drawing a very small circle at the top left corner. I also tried to experiment by doing little dots with this pen to see what the stars would look like but I didn't end up liking it as much as the traditional way of just splattering some white gouache. I feel like the splatters look more dynamic and the placement is more natural so I would definitely stick to that instead. After masking those areas, you have to make sure that the masking fluid is completely dry before we start painting. So now that it is, I'm just spraying some water so I can spread it out a bit easier with my brush. I'm only doing the portion of the sky, but if you don't have a spray bottle, you can also just use your brush to spread the water around. These are the colors for the sky. I want to make it very colorful. So there are a few colors here. I'm starting by making a purple and this is from a mixture of ultramarine deep and quin red. The reason why I always prefer to mix my colors instead of just using straight up purple is because I have the flexibility of changing the ratio. And here I have cerulean blue. So while the surface of the paper is still wet, I'm just going to alternate these colors next to the cerulean blue blue I also have Hansa yellow and also white to make the colors a bit more pastel. So it's up to you at this point but for me personally I want the top to be a bit more purple and then I want to move on to a little bit of the lighter blue, pink and then orangey yellow at the bottom. I want the sky color to be very soft and blended so I am working fairly quickly here to make sure I have the colors down while the paper is still wet. The key is to distribute the water evenly on paper so they dry at a similar rate. If not, you'll end up with blooming textures where some of the paint gathered outlining a certain puddle which happen to dry later than the other areas. Once I'm done painting the sky, thankfully I still have a bit of time before that area dries completely. So I'm mixing a purple color from the previous mixture but I'm also including cerulean blue so the purple will be brighter than before. With this, I'm switching to a smaller brush to paint some trees at the edge of the horizon. I'm making this quite random and I'm letting the edges slightly blur into the sky since the paper is still a little bit damp. Next I'm going to be painting the watery areas and for this I'm just using the exact same color as the sky because I want the water to be very still so it reflects the sky completely. I'm following the angle of where the sky is moving and also using the same colors so at the largest area I use the darkest colors like the purples and blues and as I get towards the top of the horizon I used more of the soft yellow colors. 
To get the same effect, I have to use the same technique. So here you'll see me wetting my paper where the largest body of water is, whereas the smaller areas at the back has only a very light consistency of the yellow and orange. I want the water to again be distributed fairly evenly, then I just try to replicate the same thing as the sky but mirrored. You can also mask off the moon here as a soft reflection, but I forgot and I just ended up taking the paint off with tissue while it's still wet. You'll see by taking off the color with tissue, the lines are not that clean. So if you do want those very clean edges, I would suggest for you to mask the moon for the reflection also before you wet the paper or paint anything on it. The colors that I want to use for the cross is fairly warm, whereas the colors for the sky is fairly cool. This is why I decided to clean my palette so I have something fresh to work with, or else those warm colors are going to be too muddied up with all the blues and purples. So here are the colors. I have Hansi Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Umber, Ivory Black, Viridian, and Vermilion. I want the colors of the grass near the horizon to be fairly warm, so I activated the colors Hansi Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Vermilion, and also Burnt Umber, so I have easy access to switch between those colors. I want the soft to look again, which is why I ended up wetting the paper for that specific area to create the same wet on wet effect. And while the paper is still wet, I'm just going to randomly place the colors by alternating them. I make sure to clean my brush thoroughly to make sure that the colors stay vibrant because with the wet on wet, as the paint mingles with each other, it is also going to ever so slightly mix together around the edges so I do want certain areas to be fairly bright and saturated. I also want to create a very light yellow green color so I used a mixture of Viridian which is very bright dark green with a bit of black to mute it down and Hansi yellow to make it a yellow green. For the bottom of the grass, I am going to use a dark color. I'm going to make the dark color fairly warm to match the top, but if you want yours to be more green, then the bottom would also be followed by a darker muted green. I've left out space for a few trees on the side and for this I'm going to start by painting an orange from a mixture of Hansi Yellow and Vermilion around the edges of the tree and then I'm going to follow up with the green. I'm doing this because I want the edges to be fairly warm as it reflects the warm light from the sky and I'm just doing this very random tapping motion to give it a natural looking texture. I also left out a little bit of white space here and there so the dark green looks a bit lighter as it still has some light gaps from the trees. Then at the bottom, I'm going to create shadows by using a dark green as the paint is still wet so it blends together well. For the dark green, I just added a little bit of ivory black into the green that I have on my palette already and that will create a nice muted dark green. And I'm also going to do this to build up on the color of the grass as well. Because we're still working on the top portion of the grass near the horizon, I'm also going to build up on the trees at the back. So this time I'm going to use the same purple mixture as the sky which is from the Ultramarine Deep and Quinn Red. And this will create a darker purple than the purple with the cerulean blue. So this one will stand out a little bit more in the foreground whereas the one at the back is a bit more misty looking as it recedes towards the background.
Using the same colors as before, I'm going to paint the texture of the tall grass by painting diagonal lines at different heights, but I'm not going to make this overly detailed as I'm going to add on more as we get closer to the foreground to give an illusion of depth. At this point, I realized that the brush I was using was a bit uncomfortably big, so I decided to switch to my size 0 brush to paint those grass texture to make them look more delicate. As I paint the texture of the grass, I also like to switch colors so between greens, browns, and yellows just like before. And I'm also going to use a dry brush technique to add on texture that is a little bit different to what I initially painted. Now I'm going to move on to the two sections in front and I'm going to apply the same wet on wet technique then I'm going to paint using the same colors by alternating them as before. I'm basically going to be using the same method as before by adding the darker colors at the bottom. This will give a slight lift to the grass so it doesn't look flat on the water. But the only difference with these two sections is that I'm going to be making the colors look more rich while also adding more texture on the grass. Whether you're using those colors straight up or mixing your own colors, the key is just to understand what certain colors does to the mixture. So as an example, for the green, if you add more yellow, then you will make a yellow green. But if you add any of the browns, reds, or black, it will make the green look more muted, which is what I like to make. Because I find Viridian is a bit too vibrant by itself. Because I'm going to add more detail to the tall grass, I'm going to add another step here which is to re-wet the surface of that area again so I can create a softer grass texture and then build it up after it dries. This is to give the illusion that the grass is quite densely packed. Notice how I also bring this texture above my intended areas before. This is so the texture looks a bit more lively and it doesn't look too flat because you can see the uneven surface or the uneven tips of those grass. I'm also going to do the same thing for those darker areas. Because I want this to look more detailed, I'm also going to add that texture for the darker areas as well. You'll see that the colors are fading as it dries, so I'm going to just build up on the layers until I get the richness that I want. You'll see me using a lot of pressure on my brush. This is when I am trying to create the dry brush texture because when the edge of those bristles are touching, that's when I feel that the bristles are very spread out to create that texture. After I'm happy with the vibrancy of the color, I'm going to move on to this last section and again I'm just going to wet that whole area and I'm going to paint on the base color by alternating the colors that I have on my palette. For this one, I don't want the grass in this area to be too tall, 
So after putting on this base layer like the previous sections, I'm only going to add a few of the grass texture and not make it look as densely packed as the previous ones we just painted. And while I wait for that area to dry because I can't work on it for now, I'm just going to add a few branches on the trees at the back just to give a little added detail. And for this I used a very dark brown by mixing the black and burnt umber and I'm using my small brush to make things easier for myself. At the moment, the section of the grass looked like it's just floating on top of the water or even on top of the sky. So now I'm going to add the reflection by wetting the area with a body of water. And of course, I'm also going to leave out the moon reflection because I don't want the color to run and cover the moon. So while the surface is nice and wet, I mixed a mid-tone of a muted yellow-green to place it under the grass section. So now they look like part of the marshland. You can also help the paint move long by lifting the paper and tilting it vertically to get the water to move downwards if your surface is still very wet. Okay, so now the last section is finally dry enough. It's not completely dry, but it's just slightly damp. So I'm going to create the same grass texture just on some parts of this area. I also decided to add a few stray ones on the side, but this is optional. I just find it kind of cute and it looks a bit more natural when something looks imperfect. So once I'm done with the whole painting, I'm going to take off all of the masking fluid and the masking tape. And this is where I realized I accidentally made a hole in the middle of the moon. So there's a bit of the color from the sky, but that's okay because I'm just going to cover it with white gouache. After lifting the masking fluid, this is where I also realized I didn't like the look of the stars, so I decided to add some white gouache splatters at the top of the sky. I also like to add a little bit at the bottom as well. I think I'm pretty much done here, but you can always take a look at your painting to do final adjustments, so I'm just taking off the masking tape to reveal the painting. And here is the finished painting. Though I see things that I still need to work on, especially with landscape paintings, I'm happy with the colors and with a tutorial like this, I think it's fairly flexible for you to play around with your own color combination with the same color palette. Like usual, the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!